Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit. I'm here to ask and answer one simple question. WTF is Nidhogg. It's something you probably heard about years ago and then forgot about. It's a game about stabbing people. And for some reason, it took a long, long time to bring this damn thing out. Also, it really likes to show you what the game's all about in the title screen. There's a squirrel and stabbing and also corn. I mean, that's a combination of three things that I personally enjoy. So, the developer of this game is Messhoff, and that consists of two people. And it is a game about fencing and getting to the end. It takes more than a little inspiration, I think, from a few very old games, like, say, Prince of Persia and Karatika. It's kind of like that. The whole point is to get to the end, but it's something of a tug of war, because if you die, then the other guy can run in the other direction and try to get to the next room, and he's sort of trying bypass that guy or kill him to get back to the other room and you you pull and push and tug in between those rooms until one of you reaches the end so let's go to the options menu and then i'll show you how this game actually plays the options menu is pitiful it allows you to rebind the keys which is pretty damn important by the way especially considering you might want to play this locally so you can use a controller or you can use the keyboard both are absolutely fine in this case, it's not even showing the button that I actually have bound to attack, which is shift. I'm not sure why that is, but as you can see, all my controls do actually work. There we go, and then jump for space, as you might expect. So you might want to do that, but aside from that, there are no options, which is somewhat annoying. One, because the resolution of the game is a little strange. As you've probably noticed, there are black bars on the side for no apparent reason. And also because you, you know, might want to run it in windowed mode and it doesn't let you do anything of the sort. And obviously, the graphic style is a little interesting, to say the least, a little unusual. Very much old school inspired, very retro. However, they could have allowed you to have things like windowed modes. So I'm not really sure what's going on with that. It might be an engine restriction or whatever. So welcome to Nidhogg. This is a game about stabbing people and getting to the end, as you probably noticed. There we go. And there's also some fencing involved, and a couple of karate moves here and there. You can do things like fly kicks, you can do rolls, you can even throw your sword if you so desire. In fact, <laughs> that guy managed to get under my sword swing and then kick the crap out of me, which didn't really work out so well for me, unfortunately. Oh, Jesus. Also, you can parry, and you can knock the sword out of your opponent's hand, which means that you are reduced to fighting moves, which generally don't work so well. There we go. You can also throw your sword and impale them in the head, which is extremely satisfying. There are, there are some wall jumping moves as well, which allow some very satisfying kills. And as you have probably noticed, the game is very much... Oh, he's low. He's low. Can I... I'm trying to get through this. I, oh, no. No, I, I'm not getting through this. I'm going to die. <laughs> no way. I'm just going to run myself onto his sword. There we go. It is insta-kill. Eh, sudden death. Very much so. So one mistake and you are dead. However, you do respawn. You are up against a constant stream of enemies, but so is the enemy. That's the interesting thing. So the orange player is an AI player, and ah, he is also trying to get to the end, the other direction. I'm trying to push him back and get to my end zone. This is currently not going well for me. There we go. All right, I'm going to wait for this guy, and then I shall fence him. I'm going to try and block what's coming at him. Ooh. You'll notice that there is parrying, and there are also three different levels of attack for the most part. There's low, medium, and high thrusts. There we go. And you will automatically block anything at the same level. So that's something you have to bear in mind. So you might want to attack a few times at one level and then switch over to try and confuse the enemy. This is not going to go well. Stabbed at the head. There we go. And there's a lot of interesting thinking to it. It actually reminds me more of a fighting game more so than anything else because there's an awful lot of mind games going on. You've got to be very, very cautious with how you actually play it. And it seems very simple at first, and it kind of is. I mean, learning how to attack someone in this game is as simple as pressing one button, which is not something that is particularly difficult to master. However, when you combine the various moves, such as fly kicking the melees, the dodge rolls and things like that, and the parry system, suddenly the game becomes a very high risk reward. And there's an awful lot of very quick thinking and tactics actually involved in it. There we go. So he was blocking high, so I thought, oh, I'll also go high, and then I'll switch to medium. 
And since there's a spare sword on the ground, I was able to throw that over there and grab another. And it even works on the AI, surprisingly enough. Although, honestly, I think the game shines in multiplayer more so than anything else. And the game does have online multiplayer as well as offline and a tournament mode. It seems like the offline would be the best because I have a feeling it would very much have a sort of Smash Brothers feel. And that was satisfying as hell. There we go. Excellent. Now I'm finally pushing them back. Good, good, good. Now, you can actually run past the enemy. As long as you've killed them once, and you're sort of the, the guy that is doing the best, then you can push them all the way back. You can just run past them in some areas. So it might be possible that I can... Okay, I've got a plan here. I'm going to try and draw him out. Oh, I was trying the wall jump, but it didn't work. I was going to try and wall jump past him and then just run right past. And you can do that. Again, very Prince of Persia-esque, I think. Oh, dear. Oh, I can... Ah! I thought I could roll underneath him, but it didn't quite work out the way I hoped. It's going terribly. Absolutely terribly. But there's a lot of complexity underneath that. Very simplistic veneer. And I think that's where things start to get really interesting. And it's also why I think this game is kind of award-winning. I'm not saying kind of award-winning. It is award-winning. It won various awards and was extremely popular at uh, gaming trade shows. But for some reason, they had to delay the game significantly. And now it finally arrives with barely any fanfare, which is really strange, considering it had a decent amount of hype underneath it. The question is, I suppose, should you even bother with it? It now comes out a little bit late and you think, oh, all right, well, I've lost interest. Well, you probably shouldn't lose interest because it's actually very satisfying to play. There are a number of these kind of games starting to come out now. Samurai Gun and Towerfall kind of feel similar in that respect, although in this case, it is that kind of pure 1v1 dueling tug of war thing that is somewhat unique. But it does have that Towerfall or that Samurai Gun or Smash Brothers kind of feeling going on with it. And that's definitely a positive thing. And I think that there's... Oh, no! Tried to get out. It did not work out. All right, well, I can impale him, take him out, and stab through. There we go. Actually managing to get through. That's what I like. It does have that Smash Brothers feeling to it. And I think playing against others in local would be absolutely satisfying in that regard. Online probably as well. I think it's probably pretty good. I did play some of the online. It seemed fine. I, I didn't really notice much on the lag front. Which was certainly positive. All right, go, 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 go. Okay, can I, can I fool him? Come on, come on, come on, come on. Ah, yes. <laughs> Excellent. And then you get eaten by a worm for no apparent reason. And that's the end of it. And then you go on to the next stage, which has a bunch of other gimmicks. In this case, we're actually fighting on a cloud bridge. Very, very trippy visuals. Certainly. Although I am rather glad that they picked yellow and green, which contrasts quite nicely with the purple there. That would have got a little bit awkward otherwise. Alright, I'm just going to bypass them. There we go. And it introduces different mechanics to the levels, including things like cornfields, which mean that you can't actually see the enemy for the most part. The cloud bridges, which do that. Oh, I'm going for it. I'm going for it. Yes, there we go. Absolutely ace that level. Nice and easy. And the single player continues throwing you through these various different arenas. Unfortunately, it seems that it doesn't save, which is a little bit weird. So once you get through these areas, you'll have to start again if you don't keep playing. Again, a little bit. Oh, man. That was that was unpleasant. All right. Yeah, there you go. Have some of that. Stabby, stabby. Get him in the air. Get him in the air. <laughs> Punch him back a few times, then stab him. That's what I like to see. That was fun. There we go. Grab another sword off the ground. Too slow. Too slow. So there's a decent number of modes to play. For the most part, I think the enjoyment's going to come from the multiplayer, but the single player is pretty good as well, and I think there'll, there'll be some aspect of speedrunning involved in that. The levels are always the same, but the way that it plays out is completely different. I screwed up there. I should have just thrown my sword at him, taken him out that way. Come on. It also has this weird dynamic music system, whereby apparently the, the, the music is sort of randomly generated, which should be a little bit obvious, considering there's some, there's some pretty weird stuff going on with it. That was a horrible failure. Come on. There we go. All right. Get it back in my favor. That's what I like to see. Another stab. Straight through. Okay. Where is he? He's in there somewhere. 
There we go. Ah, yes. Nice. And the overall visual style is very trippy. It's certainly retro, but there's a lot of very strange contrasting colors all over the place and things which I suppose don't... They represent things in the world. They don't actually show them in any high degree of detail. Get... Oh, that did not work the way I hoped. Never mind. Oh, this is getting worse all the time. He kicked me over. But I think there's a lot of complexity here that most people wouldn't notice. It looks very simplistic, but it actually has quite a lot going for it, which is pretty surprising. And it's fun. I think it's one of those easy to learn, hard to master games. The price tag might put a few people off though, which is unfortunate, even though the price tag is actually fairly low. Some people have, I suppose, degrees of expectation thanks to Steam sales that games will be very, very cheap, especially ones that look old. It's like, oh, it looks retro? I will pay no more than $5 then, which is a little unreasonable because in my book, yeah, you're paying for really good game mechanics. The actual graphics or in this case, the aesthetic style are really secondary to that. But at the moment, with the 20% off sale, it's $12. It's full price is $15. So what you get for that is the single player, which is various levels strung together. Oh, the multiplayer and the tournament mode as well, which consists of a few different level sets, all with their own separate little mechanics. And it's fun. It, uh, that, that's perhaps the most important thing to note is that it's actually get him. Yes <laughs> That was fantastic. Wow, okay Now we're just gonna evade this guy completely. There we go. That's what I like Holy crap. That was cool Yes Yes through the glass Very nice snuck my way past him I think it's a decent package for what it gives you, as far as I'm concerned. Although some people may be put off by the aesthetic, and I wouldn't blame them for that. No. It's, it's a very basic aesthetic, certainly. It definitely looks like an 80s game. It doesn't play like one. Not even close. I mean, it very much plays like a modern competitive title. Oh, this is not going to work, is it? Oh, grab the sword. Excellent. Oh, no! No, I want my sword back. There we go. Jeez. It's... It's pretty intense, I've got to say. I have a feeling like watching a match between two skilled players would be incredible in this game. I think there's a lot to learn. There we go. It's got that sort of dive kick feel to it in the sense that it's about moment to moment gameplay where every moment can be your last moment. There's always that air, that aura of sudden death going on, which I think can be very much appreciated. I like that. Uh, I play fighting games, and those moments are always the most exciting. And a similar kind of thought process is involved in playing Nidhogg to something like Dive Kick, certainly. Oh, yes! Go, go, go! Bypass him completely! Sweet! <laughs> and it's hard to focus on commentating because... Suddenly you realize the, mom the momentum has shifted in your favor and then you just run for it and hope for the best. And it's pretty fantastic. Although it's rather depressing when, when the momentum is against you and you keep failing horribly. There we go. Sweet. So I think you've, I think you've seen at least three of the different tile sets and levels available. Possibly four of them. This is a, a very similar tile set. In fact, I think it's absolutely identical to the last, to the first one that we played. So it seems like you just go up against different opponents the further on you go in the single player and you get timed. Yeah, this is the same as the last one. It's just with, oh great, he's pink like the background. You know what I was talking about earlier about him, them using contrasting colors and how that was really great? Well, they forgot that principle pretty quickly. The gameplay is so much fun though. It really is. Uh, if you have a friend to play this with, you can get a two pack. Even if you just want to play online, it seems like that would be a lot of fun too. Although I have a feeling doing it locally would be better. I'm actually going to play some rounds with the misses. I think that would be pretty fun. Because there's a lot here. And once you learn the fighting system and its different little nuances, I think there's a really tense, stressful scenario that's also very enjoyable and competitive. And that cannot be understated. 
Oh, I absolutely love that kind of thing. And even if you're a single player, the AI is pretty competent for the most part. It does some silly things like that, standing on a bridge and then falling down, which is a little silly. It's something a player would do, but maybe not repeatedly. And I've seen the AI do it over and over again. So it's a little bit less satisfying. But in a basic sword fight, the AI is more than competent. If I had a complaint about the control system, it may be that I've just not quite learned the ins and outs of it yet. But in my opinion, I think the switching between the different stances is a little clunky. The main problem is that you have to press two buttons in order to do it. And you can't press them at the same time. Yeah. Oh, jeez. That was a bad idea. <laughs> so you press up or down to switch your stance. So that's low stance, medium stance, high stance. But you'd think you could press that along with attack and have that actually work. It doesn't, unfortunately, unless you're doing a throw. So switching between the stances takes a little longer than you might expect. So you switch and then you attack. You switch and then you attack. It takes a little bit of getting used to. It could be a little smoother. Although I have a feeling if they made that any faster, then it would be a bit more difficult to actually react to what your opponent was doing. I think most of it has to be preemptive and you've got to play the mind games. But even then, reacting and, say, parrying a sword out of the enemy's hand is uh, maybe a little clunkier and trickier than I would expect. Perhaps it's something that I will just get used to over time, though. I haven't played a huge amount of this game yet, so... Uh, that could be it right there. Ah! Oh, almost kicked him in the head. He went high on the stance there. There we go. It's a ton of fun, though. It's very unique. Outside of something like Samurai Gun and the forthcoming Towerfall, there's not a huge amount things like this on PC, and even those games are only somewhat similar in places. The insta-kill sword fighting is really, really fun, and as basic as the graphics actually are, the animation style is quite satisfying. There's a surprising amount of detail in the animations, which make the kills all that much more satisfying, including the, the ground kills and the impaling and all sorts of things like that, as the floor becomes slick with pixelated blood. It's especially cool when you have multiple fights on the same screen because that means there's a lot more swords available you can pick them up you can do a lot more sword throws and you can take a few more risks as opposed to what you could otherwise do there so it really does change the dynamic of the game i think you'll find it very enjoyable and i think it was certainly worth the wait i wasn't really expecting a huge amount from nidhogg considering i'd never actually gone to a trade show and played it so this is my first experience with it but from what i've seen so far this seems like the kind of thing that I would absolutely love to play on stream with friends. This is a bit of a riot, and I think it's something that we'll also play in the house because it is that much fun. And I, I really think there could be a lot of salt going on with this game. Just because of the instant kill, you know, it has that dive kick feel to it. But it's less of a fighting game and more of a fencing game and with a little bit of platforming in there for good measure. So it's a nice little variant on that style. My name's been Total Biscuits, taking... Yes! <laughs> nice! Oh, God, you don't get that in most games. Wow, that was satisfying. Okay. Oh! Never mind. My name's been Total Biscuit. Take a look at Nidhogg. It is available on Steam right now for $12. Once the sale is over on the 20th of January, it will be $20. No, it won't. It'll be $15. What am I talking about? $15 or your regional equivalent. Ladies and gentlemen, my name has been Total Biscuit. Thank you very much for watching. And I will see you next time. Yeah! No! Ah, oh, you bastard! <laughs>